this journey that you got on to was there a, a particular moment that you thought that this is what you need to do or were you always uh, in this state that you felt that there was something missing in our communities and that's why you started this platform and your journey well when i when i first started studying faith and religion and spirituality even then right at at a young age i i kind of was looking for answers at a young age because i just looked around me and i saw again a lot of aimlessness amongst my peers and i just always used to think what's the end result of this where does this path lead mm. and if people don't take conscious control of their lives and their destiny they'll end up anywhere who knows what kind of results you're going to get you're just sort of playing the lottery maybe you'll you know get somewhere maybe you won't and so i was looking for answers and and i found them right once i started reading the actual uh, original source material the quran as well as the old testament and the new testament and so on and a lot of other things i've always been curious about truth and reality i've always been seeking truth and reality and uh once i actually started looking into it actively that's when it became a passion for me so once i graduated university i took that opportunity to go and study uh at a closer proximity to some of the teachers that i had by that point met and i spent a lot of time in their company and eventually um felt the need to kind of sort of come back and try to reintegrate with the world and that's when i saw you know i had spent the last let's say 10 years or so immersed in a spiritual environment mm -hmm. and coming back to the world i could see the major disconnect first of all between me and the muslim community because this just became my life for 10 years uh and more in fact but you know, this was my entire focus for a long period of time, especially at a very formative period, right? From about uh, 21, 22, up until like 32, 33. And I, I just didn't see, I saw, first of all, a huge lack of, like I said, spiritual education within the Muslim community. So that's when I just started sort of putting some content out there when, you know, uh, the online world was just beginning to, you know, become what it is now. Um. And, and, and that was kind of the beginning, right? That was the beginning of just sharing what I had up until then, uh, you know, received. Mm. Sorry, I, I didn't. So your disconnect with the community was of this understanding of the in, the spirituality? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I would I would hear mm. a lot of, uh, you know, mullahs and imams and so on, you know, speaking. And I just I couldn't relate to it at all. Mm. I could, and I thought to myself, if this is all I had ever been exposed to, I don't know if I would be following this religion. To be honest, I mean, I, mm. inshallah, I would be, but I'm just yeah. saying, oh, I know it would it would be at a a great challenge because yeah. it just seems so meaningless, meaningless. in many ways. Mm. That's the only way I can put it. Yeah, and it just seems so infantile in the way that oftentimes religion is shared with people. It, it lacked depth. Mm. It lacks depth. And there comes a point where people need more than than just you know do this or you're going to go to hell. So how do we um, do that? Well, thankfully, Allah Almighty Subhanahu wa Taala said He is going to preserve this religion, so it's being preserved. Yes, Alhamdulillah. And that doesn't just mean that the Quran is being preserved in in some sort of will never change. That's one of the meanings, but it also means that it's reality and its essence, the truth of Islam. The perfection of Islam, the beauty of Islam, the wholeness of Islam, of the way of the religion is being preserved. That means there are there are sources of knowledge, there are human beings that are carrying the way, the original way, the true way, the balanced way, the whole way. And it's up to us then to seek. Mm. Allah says, when you take one step towards me in Hadith Qudsi, right? If you take one step towards me, I will take the next ten towards you. So people shouldn't think, oh, oh, I don't know where to start. I, you know, I don't know where to look or how to find answers or how to find guidance or mentorship. We just have to take a step. Allah wants to guide everybody. Allah's not trying to hide. I mean, He is hidden, but He's wanting to be found, and He's going to reward anyone who seeks Him. And that means that means seeking truth, seeking knowledge, seeking wisdom, seeking understanding. And typically, that means seeking people of knowledge and wisdom and understanding. 
Thank you. So what is mindful living in your experience? So let's understand this, I think, um, in the best way possible, because this is a term that is thrown out quite a bit these days, mindful yeah. living, being yes. mindful. And the perfection of this idea is to be found in the way of the prophets, in the way of the prophets, all of the prophets and messengers of God. This is not some sort of new age idea. Mm -hmm. This is how they lived. And in fact, when the prophet described Islam, right, in what is known as the Hadith of Jibril, mm -hmm. and I, I won't go into the whole narration now, yes. but there's this very important Hadith. People should look it up if they're not can, familiar. You can leave a link to it in my description, yes. Yeah, in, in which, you know, the angel Gabriel comes in the form of a, of a man and asks the prophet these important questions. What is Islam? What is Iman? What is Ihsan? And he's basically showing the different stages of development within the spiritual path, within the religion. So as I said earlier, everybody stops at Islam. What is Islam? Pray, or shahada, pray, fast, zakat, and hajj. So when you talk about Islam, when people generally talk about Islam, that's all they're talking about. But it goes way beyond that. Then he talks about Iman, right? To be a Muslim is different than being a mu'min. Mu'min is deeper, yep. it's higher. Mm. It's greater level of depth and development. And you don't become a mu'min just by becoming a Muslim. You don't have iman. Real iman has, as the Quran says, iman has not yet, you've entered into Islam, but iman has not yet taken root in the heart. So that's the next step. And then there's a third step, ihsan. This is what is known as maqam al-ihsan, the station of ihsan, the station of excellence or spiritual excellence or goodness. And when, when he was asked, what is that? Tell me about that. And the Prophet ﷺ, peace be upon him, he said it is to, I'll say what he said as it's translated, but I'll, pair, I'll, I'll try to explain it as well. He said it's to worship God as if you are seeing him. Mm -hmm. And even if you are not seeing him, to know that he's seeing you. So what the Prophet of Allah ﷺ was describing was a state of mindfulness, which is a state of presence, continual presence and connectedness with Allah with our Lord, with our Creator. What does it mean to be mindful? Because the condition of humanity is, uh, is to be ghafil, is to be yeah. heedless. Mindful or present, right? To be a muttaqi, to have consciousness, is the exact opposite of being heedless, to be in a state of remembrance. A dhakr. So Islam is about awakening, literally. It's about awakening to reality and to truth. And, and that is... A, that is you know, uh, what we would call mindfulness, right? It's being in a state of presence and connectedness with our Lord and our Creator, our source, which is the reality that is. If there's any reality, it is Allah. It's the only reality that actually exists. Everything else is existing within His knowledge. So real mindfulness is being aware of God's presence, being in a state of awareness where we are always in a state of remembrance, and this is why dhikr, right, remembrance, is the quintessential spiritual practice. This is what Islam teaches. The Prophet ﷺ continually advised, the Quran continually advises, make dhikr, be in dhikr, continually be in remembrance. So how can we be a conscious parent then? First, before we tell children, I guess we need to be conscious adults, yeah, so what, what do you mean by, uh, what does that mean, conscious parent? How would you define that? That is that they are aware of what they are doing and what is the result of whatever they think and do. Because in my experience, I found that that's when I became more mindful or conscious of myself, what I was saying, how I was, what was my tone of voice when I was speaking then it came to children, how I was addressing them, how was I looking at them, how I was talking to them, at them, with them. Mm -hmm. That awareness, that consciousness of being aware of yourself from the behavior point of view, how mm -hmm. good behavior uh, does the child has, and they are yeah. They're blaming the child, but the when when you are observing, you see the child is fine. I think the parents are not really behaving very well. So 
right to be aware of like when you are yelling at the child and expecting some other result result so that kind of consciousness of adults or parents. I, mean, I, I go back to what I uh, always emphasize and, and what I was pointing to earlier, which is we have to lead by example. Because the children, you know, when it comes to raising children, the most important, the most powerful impact and effect on them is us. And that's not what we say, but it's who we are and what we do. True. So children will ultimately inherit us to a large degree. And then it'll be up to them to, to take the good and leave the bad. Mm. So, you know, we have to lead by example. And, sure. and that just simply means, you know, to continually do our best to improve, to learn, to evolve. Life is about continual improvement. If we're not improving, we are, we're not serving our purpose. So do you find that parents, if their parents are fine and they are leading by example, like their, their behaviors are good, they're actions their way of earning their way of speaking everything is good but the child is not really following that is is that has that ever happened in your experience in your um, coaching teaching well we can be we can be good but that's not enough we also have to be effective mm -hmm. so it goes back to understanding the dynamics and dealing with the practical situation as well Right. So in a in a proper Muslim household, there's a lot of things that have to be in place. Right. There's let's say there's compassion, there's kindness, there's gentleness, there's but there's also discipline, there's also structure. Oh. There's also limits, right? There's that too. Oh. There has to be a balance between both of these aspects. And that requires understanding. What are the challenges that are being dealt with? Like let's say, okay, for example, one of the biggest sources of fitna now are cell phones yeah. for human beings and for children especially true and that will destroy a child it'll destroy human beings but it'll definitely destroy a child that has unrestricted access to a cell phone and there's enough evidence at this point where there's no doubt about this right that they've shown clearly how social media use for example has now exponentially increased uh, depression suicide uh, social anxiety all of these problems so you can be a good parent mm. and, and be kind and gentle and loving and so on but you also have to be a disciplined parent yeah and and, and that requires both the mother and the father it requires the masculine and the feminine mm. it requires both yin and yang mm. and, and so for example right you have to understand this is a danger and so i can be a good muslim but if my kid is getting now primarily influ influenced through TikTok and Instagram and, you know, whatever, Facebook, social media, YouTube, et cetera. Uh, my, no matter how good I am, they're going to have, they're not going to turn out so great. You know, so as a child, remember, we have to understand this is a new problem that the world has to deal with. And that's why I mean, we have to keep staying on, uh, on the edge of what's happening and being aware of what's happening. Now we have a new, uh, a whole new inflection point at this point, which is AI. Mm. And I think most people have no concept or no idea of really what that involves, what that entails, how that it's affect. We have to learn. We have to be learning continually. It's too fast nowadays, actually, to, for people to follow also. It is, but it's also an opportunity. Yeah. This also becomes an opportunity that, that we can take advantage of to continually learn and deepen our understanding of Islam. Yeah. It's all happening by God's will. Yeah. So if And if we don't do that, the consequences will be dire. They will be severe. Again, it goes back to forms. If all we understand are forms, then we yeah. don't have com we don't have the ability to interact with people, except through rigidity, and exactly. and sort of do and don't, black and white. Mm. 